All right, welcome back. So something that we should have done a long time ago, it's actually save. So let's go ahead and do that now. Command S, Control S, or File, Save, and we can save our work. So we can do it wherever you want. You can also save it wherever you want. So by default, it should take you to the Projects folder in Eagle. So let's go ahead and use that. So I'll call it Learning Eagle. And I'm going to save and notice the .sch is first schematic. We don't have a board yet. Otherwise, it would also save the board with it. And we'll show that in just a moment. So go ahead and save it. Quite frankly, I'll just do a command S to save it as I go. So the next thing we're going to do is actually make the board. To do that, in the top left corner, it'll say generate switch to board. If you type in board, it'll switch to the board. So it's going to ask you if you want to create from schematic. And we'll click yep. If you said no, it would give you some trouble. So pretty much always when it asks that, you're going to want to create that. And if you notice, here on the left, we have our components. And it corresponds to the ones that we were dropping earlier. And then here, we have our board. If you notice, when we switch to the board, we have our same or similar toolbar menu. And you'll notice we have some new commands that appeared. And then we have our command line up here that looks very similar. You'll notice that the units automatically change to mills and with a square of 50 and that the grid turned off. We can turn the grid on by doing grid on and the grid appears and we're actually gonna go into the grid. So we're gonna type in grid and we're gonna change the metadata here. So this is completely up to you. You're not forced to use mills or inches here. This is completely up to you. And I personally like to use millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the two millimeters, millimeter, millimeter. And you're gonna notice when I do that, it automatically converts the 50 mils to millimeter here. And I want it to be one millimeter and I want the alternate to always be half of this. Sometimes I go smaller, but just by default, I like to leave it half. So you'll notice the grid slightly changed relative to the board here. And so now if we go to info and click on our dimension here, you'll notice that its length is 100 millimeters. So that's a way of seeing by default, Eagle created a board that was 100 millimeters in length. And you'll notice the layer's dimension. So the layer dimension is used for defining the board outline. So that was our first introduction to the layers and we'll go over more very shortly. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is save. If you haven't, it shouldn't pop up with anything to save. It'll just automatically name it as you see here. The same name as our schematic, but a BRD file. So we had our schematic file before, and this is a board file. And that's all Eagle needs to use to navigate or to map the schematic to the board. And that's exactly what the schematic is. This is high level. This is abstract. And the board is very explicit. This is what you're going to print. And you're going to notice that there's these yellow lines. These are called air wires. And here, all the nets that we made here correspond to an air wire here and it makes the appropriate connections to the appropriate pins and so that's the benefit of using net if you had not used net earlier and used some other layer other than the net layer to make your wire connections then it wouldn't guarantee you that it would be a electrical connection here the air wires always show the shortest path but it doesn't guarantee that there's actually an electrical connection it's up to us to route the board so let's go ahead and make our board smaller this is quite large i'm going to do zoom to fit and we could just type in move and move the dimension to fit our size and that's one way of doing it make sure you keep a nice straight angle here and we can also go ahead and make some complicated design however on that note I would highly recommend if you're making anything more complicated than a rectangular or rectangle or square shape that you use some other software like SolidWorks or Inkscape or some other catting software to make your interesting design board shape and then import it into Eagle there's also some other complicated ways where you can just find something on the internet like a heart shape and then you can use again another piece of software to get the outline of it and then import it as a DXF, but we won't show that in this video. We're just going to stick with the introductory square. So you can also change the size if you type in info and click on the side. And if you want it to be exactly 30 millimeters, you can. That'll change just this length. So it's up to us to change this length as well. We can also change the other lengths. So this is the X value from X value to. So it's from here 29 to 0, and we're changing the 30. And then from here, it'll show the X value from 29 to 27 here, and we're going to change everything to 30. So now we have a 30 millimeter by 30 millimeter square. We may change the size in a moment as well. So let's go ahead and add our stuff onto the board. Here, if you're using the free version and you move and you click outside of the build area, it may yell at you. I don't know if Eagle has fixed that. It's one of their freemium versions that do that. If you're using education or standard or premium version, it won't yell at you. So again, on our board, we have an origin for our devices. 99% of the time, it should be in the center, but you have to click on there to move it. If we click here on the side, it won't do anything. We have to click on the origin. So we can go ahead and drop it on here. And this is our battery. Notice how you see on the side, it's yelling at us. That's our design rule check that's yelling at us saying that according to the design rules set right now, it won't be able to print that. And we'll show you guys that in just a moment. So let's put this in the center. Our right hair looks good. It's not quite in the center. We're actually gonna change it in a moment. Maybe we'll put it there. And that's our battery. If we wanna put it on the bottom, which we're gonna do in this case, we type in mirror in the top left. And then if we click on the origin, it'll flip it 
to the other side of the board. Now that was probably really awkward to see. This happens to be a symmetrical device. So it by symmetry looks exactly the same. So the silk screen, which is the white here, didn't change. However, the pads changed from red to blue. So the red denotes that this will be on the top of the board or placed on the top of the board. And the blue denotes that it'll be on the bottom of the board. Eagle has a way of showing what's on the bottom of the board. So if we click here, it says flip. It'll actually mirror everything. So now this is the bottom of the board. And notice how these are all on the top and the text appears backward, but here the text appears normal. So we're gonna go back to the top of the board for now and all our text appears normal because by default we're on the top. So let's go ahead and move our AT Tiny. We have to be very careful. The green pads are both on the top and the bottom of the board. It's literally a drill in the center from top of the board to the bottom of the board. And then the green pad will appear on both the top and the bottom of the board as well. And that's what we soldered to. So if we put it over a device that's on the bottom or on the top, as I'll show here, it's gonna yell at us, the DRC is gonna yell at us. And pretty much it's just giving us a warning that if you were to manufacture this, that your device is running through itself or that this pad is gonna go through the ground. Um, and A, we won't be able to put this capacitor on there, but also B, you may have a manufacturing complication. So red pads are only on the top. So we can put this over the blue and we're not gonna get yelled at at all because these are independent of each other. This is on the top of the board. This is on the bottom of the board. So it doesn't matter really where we place it. So just place it somewhere meaningful to you. And when we put our other devices, I'll we'll put the switch, might put this one on the bottom. If I mirror it, this will actually show a change because it's not symmetrical. So you saw it flipped over and then we can rotate it like normal. This is yelling at us, but it won't in a few minutes. Let's go ahead and move our LEDs. So again, if you observe the air wire, it kind of helps direct us where the connections are going to be made. So we can move it around. To me, it feels logical to have this connected like this and then its respective resistor. Making the best connection seems to be like this. Seems to be a little off and I'll show you guys how to change that in a moment. Let's add the other LED. One thing I want to show you guys now is I already know the LED is called LED1. So if you type in the top left corner, move, and then the name of the LED, LED1, it'll automatically move that LED for you. So that's a helpful hint if you are very familiar with the names of your devices. And then move R1 for resistor one, rotate it and drop it like that. And then let's move our capacitor. So move C1, and this should be connected to VCC. The data sheet tells us that we should put it as close as possible to the microcontroller. Now, if you notice, I told you guys that the air wires will always point to the shortest route, but you'll notice that this is VCC and this is VC and that these should be connected together and they should be. However, the air wire will do the shortest route as it was before. If we want to update that, we can use the command called rat's nest, which is a very interesting name for a command. Um, I am not exactly sure of the origin of it. What I believe is that with your air wires, with your routes, which we'll do in a moment, when you have hundreds of them, thousands of them, that it's very complicated and a mess. And I feel like maybe they called it that because it's a rat's nest and it's like a mess or something. Not 100% sure. Uh, that's just what I believe. You can go ahead and look it up and maybe let me know. So if we type in rat's nest, it does two things. It'll reroute our air wires and it'll also do something else. And that is it'll fill in our ground or our power planes, which we don't have here yet, but it will also do that. And I'll show you guys that very shortly as well. We have everything on the board. I'm gonna zoom to fit to make it look nice and centered. And if we want to rearrange some of the devices, we can go ahead and do that. So when we added everything here, it added them on the millimeter scale. But if you type in info and you click on the devices, you'll notice that they're slightly off. This is something in Eagle that is kind of annoying and I don't know how to fix it explicitly, but we can change the position manually by just typing like 14 and 20. And since we're using millimeters, they should snap nice and neat. So I'm gonna leave this 2.0, 25, this one, 14, 11. So it's kind of annoying, but I can't help it. What we could have done to avoid this is if you make a schematic and then immediately make the board and then change the board dimensions to millimeters, you could probably avoid this mess, but I didn't foresee it. And honestly, when I do design most of my boards, I usually do the entire schematic and then I start with the board after. All right, so everything's now snapping the origin to the grid. So before we route things, we are pretty much ready to do it. These DRC errors might be very annoying. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about the DRC. 